I just completed the 75 card challenge and I gained nine pounds on my first try and I didn't mess up, which I'm actually really shocked by. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about why I started the challenge, what were some of my strategies kind of like going into it and how I was able to stay consistent without messing up. What did I enjoy the most? What did I enjoy the least? What were the hardest parts? Of course, we're gonna talk about my results. And at the end, we're gonna go over my final thoughts. And if I actually recommend this for other people to try, like, is this something that would be good for you? And could it help you with your life? All the timestamps are gonna be linked below. So let's get right into it. Hi, my name is Corey. I'm 25 years old. I live alone in the lovely Washington, D.C., where the rent is going up daily. And I know why you're all here, okay? You want to see the results. You want to know how the challenge was. But first, I'm going to talk about why I started the challenge. So I started this challenge on July 3rd. Um, I had just transitioned into a new job, but I was still having like certain mental blockages. I deal with anxiety, occasional depression, and I have a lot of like, I guess emotional stuff going on in my life sometimes. And pretty much, I was just getting really tired of my anxiety and I wanted a drastic change. Like I didn't want a little, oh, do a little journaling here, do a little meditation here. Like I wanted a overall like shift in my daily routine that was hard and that would allow me to shift my perspective in a grander way. I really resonated with the idea of the challenge, like purposely putting you in places of inconvenience convenience to help you grow and to help you foster like that's always been a concept that I've been really into so that's what drew me to the challenge if you're not familiar with the challenge I put a little screenshot here of what you have to do but you pretty much have to engage in two workouts one has to be outdoors and they both have to be 45 minutes you have to read 10 pages of a book every day you need to drink a gallon of water every day but I only drank half a gallon because I'm small you have to take a progress picture follow a diet and you can have no cheat meals or alcohol um I kind of switched out the no no cheat meals or no alcohol because I don't drink and I don't like indulge my, my issue is that I don't eat so like a cheat meal would be pretty like good for me so I was like for me what I did was I took I said I was not allowed to buy clothes retail therapy is a love of mine and so yeah that was something that I would kind of resort to anytime I was feeling a lot of anxiety or feeling like emotional other than that I didn't really like change or swap out anything my overall opinions on the challenge if you can't tell is overwhelmingly positive. I think it is a really good tool for people who are lacking structure. And even if they're very disciplined, like I'm a pretty like disciplined person. I know how to follow something. I kind of just wanted the stuff to be laid out for me already. I was already actually heavily into fitness. Like I was going to a kickboxing gym very regularly, running on my own and stuff, but just having everything together, like really helped me stay focused. Another big thing with the challenge is you can't miss any days. So if you do miss a day, then you have to start all over. I completed the challenge from July 3rd to September 15th and I did it in one go, which I was actually pretty shocked about. I thought I was going to mess up and going to have to start over. Um, after like day 50, I got really used to everything and I, I kind of just, I knew I wasn't going to quit after that. Um, but before that, up until like the halfway point, I was just like, yo, like, why am I doing this? And that thought kept kind of festering in my head. I would say I feel like it took me like 30 days to start seeing real like physical results or even like kind of mental results like until I really felt that shift start to change and then like I said it took like 50 days for it to really become like a pretty ingrained habit where I just knew I would keep going. Now the part everybody's waiting for of course is the results. You know, what did I get from the challenge? What do I really have to show for it? And I gained nine pounds. So a little backstory, I've always been severely underweight. So this has been the biggest accomplishment that I've gained from the challenge, gaining nine pounds. And I'm up, I think 12.2 pounds from my lowest weight this whole year. On May 4th, I weighed in at 86.4 pounds, which was my lowest weight for this year. And I probably was honestly lower than that earlier in the year because I had more anxiety. I'll wait till the police leaves. For me, once my anxiety kicks in, I lose all desire to eat. And it's actually comforting, like not thinking about food. I don't know, some weird psychological shit. But yes, while the diet was the hardest part because I'm getting over, you know, these mental things and hurdles that I'm going through with guarding like my appetite and my body, 
it was also the most rewarding to work through that and to actually gain weight and see results from that. The way I did the diet was I had to eat at least five meals or eat at least 2,100 calories. And I kind of like alternated between that. Most days I got both of them done, um, but that cut me in a consistent 200 calorie caloric surplus, which is the only thing technically that you need to gain weight, like to just be eating more calories than you burn. And I tracked all of this through Macro Factor. I think I'm gonna do a whole video on like just my weight gain like from a child from childhood to now but yeah let's get a little into the progress pictures so the biggest thing that you will notice is my ass is just yo if you would have told me that most of my weight would go to my ass i would not believe you but yes it's honestly for me a little hard to see it in like the progress pictures that i took especially like the ones from the front i don't feel like you can notice a big difference but my thighs well, everything has rounded out just in general, like my abdominal region, my legs, my shoulders, like everything has rounded out. And again, like my ass has gotten bigger. But when I put on clothes, you can see like a tremendous difference. Like I look like I damn near got a whole like new size of the pants on. I think this was the moment where I was like, yo, this shit works. <laughs> and I could start feeling it like, Filling out my clothes in general is just something I've just, I've never experienced. I've always like bought clothes and they ended up being too big. And I was just kind of like, oh, I'm gonna gain weight one day. And fucking 10 years later, like it's actually happening now. So um, that has been the biggest accomplishment like internally, but also externally for me. My second biggest accomplishments is I read four and a half books. Here are all the books I read. I'm gonna give a little brief, I guess, synopsis of each of the books. Um, we got the 12 week year, which pretty much um, is a book about how to like plan your life out. In the beginning, the book like talks about, you know, creating like a proper vision for the things you want to accomplish. And then it gives you very specific steps on how you can accomplish all of those. I think this is the order I read them in too, but we got the power of habit. This along with the companion book, cause again, this is by the, these are by the same author. Um, but they both talk about these psychological concepts between like how humans like engage in certain activities. And it really allows me to kind of look back on like my own habits and my own activities. Why am I engaging in certain thoughts and behaviors and how is that like impacting like the people around me? Digital Minimalism is one of my favorite books out there. I've talked about this book before on the channel, but it pretty much talks about how technology, specifically like social media, is such a like huge distraction, how it impacts our mental health, and how um, intentionally putting it into your life instead of like letting it, letting it control you can help you, you know, have more peace of mind. Like that's, that's the main thing that I get from the book at least. And then the final book, Ikigai, um, I read half of this and this book is like pretty quick read. Like I probably could knock the rest of the book out in like a couple days, but this book um, centers around the author kind of like taking transcripts and stuff from interviews that they took on centenarians, which are people who live to be like 100 plus years old. I think I'm saying that word right. I want to say the oldest people in the world live in Okinawa. Oh Lord, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. But yes, ikigai is a Japanese word that I think pretty much translates to your reason for living. This is a concept that I learned about like years ago when I was in college. And yeah, it was cool to like actually read this book and just learn kind of like the habits and stuff that people engage in to live a long life. Reading, I feel whenever I'm reading, I know I'm like in my best state of mind and I'm producing the most, not in like a work way, but in like a creative way. Like my mind is just in a, better place like it pretty much sets me up to like do good and better things and it's not like pressurous that was another big accomplishment because i've like always wanted to get back into that we got the drinking water so that was probably the second hardest thing um i bought this half gallon container and i would pretty much just fill it up either when i went to work or when i went to the gym in the morning and just drink it throughout the day um, the earliest you drink your water, the easiest it's gonna be. There were days where I stayed up late and I had half of this thing left and I had to, you know, get it in. And then I ended up peeing, like waking up eight times in the middle of the night, which is like really annoying. When I first started the challenge, I was like, like I was peeing like eight times throughout the day, like just at work alone. And then, yeah, I don't really enjoy like drinking water that much. So it was good to kind of like force myself to drink more water. We got the workouts, which people I feel think is like the hardest thing, but I think most people do it like this. Like 
my outdoor workout was always a walk so i went on like a two mile walk every day and i feel this was so beneficial because it allowed one it forced you it forces you to get out the bed i would either do it like in the morning or during my break at work because i get like an hour long break at work and it forces you to like step away from whatever you're worrying about and just kind of go on a little adventure and explore even if it's just outside of your apartment you know and it allows you like i got lucky i want to try this out during the winter um like just doing the 75 hard during the winter but i think it only rained on me like twice and it wasn't like severe at all um so that was like really nice just being able like being forced to get outside even when i didn't really feel like it like every time i took a walk i felt tremendously better afterwards so I think everybody should do that and to some extent. Don't have to be 45 minutes, but you know, just get outside, get you some fresh air. And I felt like productive, or I wanted to be productive like after I did it. It kind of just, you know, got the ball rolling, especially when I did it in the mornings. My other workouts included going to the pool, kickboxing classes, yoga classes, having gym sessions, and I was working on running um, longer distances and stuff at the time most days i got two outdoor workouts in like especially you know going to the pool or going for my runs and some days i did end up you know just doubling up doing like a walk like sometimes like that's all that i kind of had for the day or like that's what i knew i could get done for the day so you don't have to do something extreme if you're doing this challenge like like the challenge itself is extreme ish i don't know i don't think it's like that extreme anymore after doing it but yeah, you could like definitely modify things within it for it to be something like that you could in incorporate in your everyday life. You know what I'm saying? Did I talk about all of the elements? A little bit of like what um, I haven't really necessarily heard a lot of people say. Like th there are parts of it. I'm talking about the challenge like overwhelmingly positively, but like the shit was annoying on some er, even most days well most means more than 50 percent. I don't know. A lot of the days were like pretty annoying. I was just kind of like why am i doing this like i said after day 50 like that kind of went away and i was just like i know this is good for me so i'm gonna like just keep going and there are like temptations to stop it like the most days that i felt like i wasn't gonna make it or it sounds so dramatic but that i wasn't gonna finish it were the days where i was being like social and not planning out my stuff like i feel like if you're gonna be you know go do like social stuff with your friends like get as much done as you can before you go out with people because you know unless you know how to just cut stuff off and like leave at good times whenever you're doing stuff with people like get as much done as you can before you hang out with people now i do feel like this challenge kind of influenced me in a way to like socially isolate i'm already i already be doing that naturally but it kind of like gave me more of a reason because i was so tunnel vision and focused on making sure i accomplished everything and i was gonna like you know the overall goal was to get results that i wanted improve my mental and my physical health which I was able to do. It's hard for, it was hard for me to like hang around people who weren't like working on themselves to like that same capacity. I'm not, it's not like I wanted my friends to do the challenge too, but it was kind of like, that's kind of, it was kind of like a big thing that I wanted to talk about that I felt kind of weird bringing up. And this was helping my mental health so much that it kind of just, made me less interested in socializing and talking to people. If you have a very fruitful social life, like this probably would have happened to you, but as someone who already socially isolates and stuff, like that's something that I noticed. To go along with that, I wanna talk about like why I feel like I was able to do it and not mess up a lot is because I don't have like huge social life. I feel like that's probably what gets in the way of a lot of people or maybe like their friends are like drinking and they'll wanna like drink as well. So that uh mess up one thing or, you know, going out to eat with friends and stuff could like, mess up certain things but but yeah me not having like a huge social life and also i was like barely dating or barely like i feel like when i'm dating i'm distracted so this kind of like forced me to be like more single in a way and again i just became like very hyper focused on myself i am lucky to not have like dependence or like other people like other people like relying on me and stuff so it was really like a good time in my life for me to do it as well it really just comes down to time like are you able to find the time to fit the task you know into your day i have no chronic conditions so the only like physically like as far as physically feeling ill like the only days that would kind of like feel weird where like my first day on my period which would be like really uncomfortable i like days like that i don't really eat a lot in the beginning of the day or when like my period first starts so something for women to consider you know um but it's definitely like 
manageable. As long as you plan it out, it's definitely manageable. That being said, my final thoughts on the challenge, you know, is this something that is right for you? I wanted to take a leap on myself and like do something drastic. Like that was my reasons for starting it. If you're thinking about that, you're watching videos like this, this is probably something that you're really interested in. And I would encourage you to just try it out. It's not gonna be the worst thing in the world, you know, if you don't like it or you stop it. The video just cut off, so um, what was I saying? I was just saying um, you might surprise yourself, you know. I would encourage you to try it out. I think it did so much for me. Again, gaining weight was like that big thing. It was hard for me to be consistent with planning and tracking my calories and stuff, and I was able to do it. Like, I have been under 90 pounds my entire life, and now I'm like hovering that 97, 98 mark. And, and I gained a lot from this. I encourage you to take the leap on yourself, you know. You might as well. We're only here for a short amount of time. And for real, we don't even know how long that is, so. I'm not saying the challenge is easy. I want to emphasize that. Challenge is not easy, but it's not as hard as it sounds. You know, I'm always thinking about that next thing that I could do to work on myself. Well, also, of course, being proud of the things that you have accomplished now. Like, you have come a long way wherever you are in your journey, and there's so much farther that you could go. So, thank you for watching. Check out my Day in the Life of 75 Hard video right here if you're interested in learning more, and I hope you have a great day.